All right, welcome to the graph question. Let's get started. Uh, first thing, just because there is a graph doesn't make it the graph question. The graph question will usually give you the derivative or it'll kind of coyly say that it's the derivative. It's a little bashful about it. It tells you in a weird way. Um, but it'll give you the, a graph of the derivative and ask you questions about the original function. So we're going to really be taking advantage of our ability to relate ff prime and f double prime when these problems show up. Um, some things that you might be asked to do is evaluate integrals geometrically, or maybe they'll give you the areas of some shapes and they'll tell you to use them somehow. Uh, find and justify extrema and points of inflection. Find slope using rise over run. So just like there's a line segment, find the slope of it, or say that you can't find the slope of that x value because corner cusp, vertical asymptote, something like that. Um, find or justify where a function is increasing or decreasing or concave up and concave down or use candidates test to find an absolute max or min. So there's a lot of things that the graph question can ask you. It really tests a lot of things that you would know how to do. Um, some things to watch out for. First one is FTC1, Fundamental Theorem Calculus Part 1, where you have to do the derivative of an integral. Because what they really like to do, more often than not, is they say this. They define the function g as the integral of f, and then they give you the graph of f. And then, so what we're going to do, though, is we're going to take the derivative of both sides, g prime equals f in that case, because remember, the derivative of an integral, they cancel each other. And they do this all the time. And literally, if you write g prime equals f when they do that, usually you get a free point, which is wonderful. Recognizing that g equals the integral means g prime equals the original, so just this, you get a free point. So fingers crossed that you get that opportunity to basically get a point for free. Um, they're also going to take advantage of your integral properties. Um, so there's a bunch of them that you should brush up on, and I'll have a sheet of them for you. But the real big one is this, uh, where if the smaller number is the lower one, remember you flip it by making it negative. So let's get going. The function f is differentiable on the closed interval negative 6 to 5 and satisfies f of negative 2 equals 7. The graph of f prime, the derivative of f, consists of a semicircle and three line segments as shown in the figure above. The first thing they want us to do is find the values of f of negative six and f of five. So we need to write an expression that represents f of negative six and f of negative five in terms of f prime, because that's the only information we have to go on. We're given the graph of f prime. That's all we can do. So that's gonna be a net change theorem question. That seems to be a common plug in these videos, right? You should know the net change theorem. I realized that I was doing this with my hands, but it was out of sight. So now I'm up here doing it so you can see them. Know the net change theorem. Okay, uh, find the values of f of negative 6. Let's start there. So I need to take advantage of this piece of information. It says f of negative 2 equals 7. So anytime that I'm trying to go to a different x value, I need to do an integral that starts at negative two. So let's do f of negative six first, and I'll probably end up erasing it just because I'll run out of room and then do, the, do f of five later. So I know that f of negative two is seven. Now I'm gonna do plus the integral from negative two because that's the x value I have information at to negative six for f prime. Now, when we did this in class, I think I did it um, a little bit differently. I just said, if you're going backwards in time, then you would subtract the integral instead. And some people were just 100% 100 okay with that. Some people were not okay with that. If, if you're not okay with that, what you can do is what I'm doing right now. You can recognize that, oh crap, these bounds are backwards. Let me fix that by rewriting it like this. Remember to flip the bounds, you just make the integral negative. So I need to find the integral of f prime from negative six to negative two. Well, the integral of this graph would just be the area, right? So let's start at negative six and let's go to negative two. Oh, that, first of all, that was weird. That just looks like a triangle to me, right? So we just need to find the area of this triangle. Well, the height is two, right? You can either see that by going over here or you can see that the y coordinate was two. The base goes from this value to this value. That's from negative six to negative two, so that should be four. So the area of this triangle is one half times two times four. 
Well, these kill each other, and we're left with 4. So the integral is 4. So this should be equal to 7 minus 4, which is 3. So there's my f of negative 6. Now, very similarly, I'm going to get f of 5. I'm going to start with 7, because that's where I have some information about, plus the integral from negative 2 to 5 for f prime of x. So again, we're going to go back to the graph. I'm going to erase this stuff so that we can talk about going to 5 instead this time. We're going to start at negative 2, and we're going to go all the way over here to 5. So we have to go all the way there. So we have to find the area of this circle, and we have to find the area of this triangle. Now be careful, that needs to be negative, right? We're under the x-axis, that area is negative, and this needs to be positive because it's above the x-axis. So the first thing I'm going to do is find the area of this semicircle. So the semicircle is going to be pi r squared over 2, because it's half of a circle. We're taking the formula for the area of a circle and cutting it in half. I'm going to lower that so you can see it. Now I can see that the radius of this circle is 2. So that should be pi times 2 squared over 2, which is 4 pi over 2, which is just 2 pi. So that area is 2 pi. It's below the x-axis, so it's going to be negative 2 pi. Now let's, let me change color so that we get a little less confused as to what's going on. This triangle has a base of 3 and a height of 2. So we're going to do 1 half base times height. We get 6 times 1 half, which is just 3. So then, if I go back down to my integral, it's 7 minus 2 pi, because remember that was under the x-axis, plus 3. So this was the triangle. This was the semicircle. This was the initial value. So 7 plus 3 is 10 minus 2 pi. And this is a no calculator section, so we'll just leave it as 10 minus 2 pi. I'm over here now. I paused the video for a second because I thought I made a mistake, but we're good. Okay, so there's part A. Now we're going to go to part B. Part B says, on what intervals is F increasing? Well, I have information about F prime. So in order to determine that, I need to think, how can I use F prime to tell if F is increasing? Well, f is increasing whenever f prime is positive, because remember, that would be the slope is positive. So all I have to do is look and see, well, when is this function positive, right? When is f prime above the x-axis? Well, that looks like from here to here, right? On that interval, everything's above the x-axis. And then again, from here to here. So that's going to be from negative 6 to negative 2. And it's also going to be from 2 to 5. Now, the thing that I was saying before, that's the justification. All we have to say uh, is because f prime is positive on these intervals. That's all you have to do. Easy peasy. All right, next, find the absolute minimum value of f on the closed interval negative 6 to 5. Justify your answer. This is a little trickier. Um, absolute minimum, closed interval. This sounds like candidate's test. I almost spelled it wrong. Yes, I am going to write this whole thing and then erase it because I need the room, but I'm making a point that it's candidate's test. Yay, it's candidate's test. It's your favorite and mine as well. So when we're doing candidates test, what we have to do is look at the derivative, find the critical points, right? So we want to minimize f, so that means we need to find the zeros of f prime. I see a zero here, I see a zero here, and I see a zero here. So we want to use the critical points and the endpoints. So we found the critical points. We 
are given the endpoints. So we're going to go negative 6, negative 2, positive 2, and 5. Now, we need to come up with a way to get f, right? So this is where we're going to use a little bit of that net change theorem idea. Um, we're going to say that f of x is equal to that initial value plus the integral from negative 2, because that's where we have information, x f prime of t dt, right? So it's just an integral. That's how we're going to get this. Um, I wrote it in terms of this function notation so that we can just plug in the x's very easily. So we've done x equals negative 6 and x equals 5. We did that in part a. Remember when we did part a for f of negative 6, we got 3. And for f of 5, we got 10 minus 2 pi. So we only have two more that we have to find because we found those two in a previous problem. So let's do f of negative 2 first. We'll do it up here. f of negative 2 should be equal to 7 plus the integral from negative 2 to negative 2 of f prime of t dt. Remember, I changed the variables so that they mismatch. Uh, well, the integral from negative 2 to negative 2, the bounds are the same. Brush up on integral properties. This is 0. There is no area under a single point. So then f of negative 2 is just 7. Also, you want to do it even easier, you realize they literally told you right here f of negative 2 is 7. You didn't need to do the integral. Okay, next thing we have to do is f of 2. f of 2 is going to be equal to 7 plus the integral from negative 2 to 2 of f prime of t dt. Okay, well, in order to evaluate the integral, that's just the semicircle, which we've seen that semicircle before. We know that that area would ended up being 2 pi. So then f of 2 is 7 minus 2 pi because it's under the x-axis. Okay, and we want the absolute minimum. So which one of these is smallest? Well, that's a little harder this time, right? You, have, you just have to think, though. 2 pi is 6.28. It's going to have to be this one. 7 minus 6.28, that's a little bit less than 1. So that's going to be our smallest value. And the, the table of values is a perfect justification for it. All right, last part. For each of f double prime of negative 5 and f double prime of 3, find the value or explain why it does not exist. So f double prime of negative 5, that means I want to find the derivative of f prime at negative 5. Well, that means I'm right here, right? I want to find the derivative at that point. Remember, derivative means slope. So what I'm going to do is I just need to find the slope of this line segment. Well, I can use any points I want, so I'm going to start here and I'm going to go to here. In order to get there, I have to go down 2, and I have to go to the right 4. So that means that my f double prime of negative 5 should be equal to negative 2 over 4, which is negative 1 half. Okay, just rise over run. f double prime of 3. So 3 I'm right here. Now that should be an, a big red flag to you. You should be looking at that and be like, wait, I thought we couldn't do a derivative there. You're exactly right. Cusps, corners, discontinuities. We cannot differentiate. So what we're going to say is f double prime of 3 does not exist because there's a corner here. That's sufficient. That'll, that'll literally get you full credit by putting those two things. F double prime of 3 does not exist because there's a corner. F double prime of negative 5 equals negative 1 half. Now, the scoring guidelines we're about to look at were a little more complicated for F double prime of 3, but what we have written is sufficient.
All right, uh, part A, we got credit for doing the two integrals um, and making sure we use the initial condition. Part B, we said that it's increasing on those intervals um, because F is positive there, F prime is positive there. Um, they use some brackets, but it's fine. If you use parentheses, you're not gonna get marked wrong. Uh, the absolute minimum occurs at a critical point or an endpoint. So considering x equals two, x equals two and x equals negative two, those were important. We had to consider the critical points and the endpoints, and we end up choosing S7 minus two pi. So there was our candidates test. That was probably the hardest one on here. Um, and then part D, F double prime of negative five is negative one half. F double, F double prime of three does not exist with an explanation. Saying a corner was there, perfectly fine. Um, yeah, so there's the graph stem.